can't take the paper runs? Nope, nope, that'll do it. All right, our next presenter is John Jerome Vicky is going to talk to us about the necessity of hands-on learning in middle school. He is part of the honors program and is mentored by uh, Eva Jones, Steve Minkler, and then myself. Hey. Hello. Um, as Dr. Levy mentioned, my name is J.P. Tyrone, and this, uh, the past two semesters, this semester and the last, I had the opportunity to work with the Rockfall Grant Project. The Rockfall Grant Project allows college students to mentor middle school students in environmental science. And as I was performing the experiments with the kids and I watched the kids, I noticed how well the kids interacted when they were working with the material hands-on. And this uh, gave me a hypothesis that middle school or students in general will work better with hands-on material rather than just a straight lecture. Now, for the Rockfall Grant Project, we performed four workshops. The first of which was just a, to get to know the kids, we go in, we say hello, we introduce ourselves, and we start teaching them just about the scientific method. How to observe, how to hypothesize, how to design an experiment, how to implement your experience, experiment, how to collect data, and then how to analyze your data afterward. The, uh, after we taught them by word of mouth and lecture style, we gave them pine cones and dissecting microscopes so they could observe and work with the microscope, uh, with the pine cones. And I saw the transition from when they were sitting in class, they were very attentive and they seemed to enjoy the topic, but as soon as they were able to get their hands on those pine cones, they went crazy. They, they really enjoyed what they were doing. The second workshop that we performed was a benthic macroinvertebrate lab. This lab uh, takes insects from streams and we use those to, uh, to tell how polluted water is. Certain of the benthic macroinvertebrates will live in cleaner waters and others will live in any types of water. And so they, are, they are, have very hardy body systems and they can live in the most polluted waters with high iron concentrations and such. The third workshop that we performed was a, a was it, <clears throat> sorry, we, we uh, tested water quality using probes. We tested for dissolved oxygen for the pH of the water, for turbidity and conductivity. All these factors play into how polluted the water is and gives us an idea of how, how polluted the water is in, in an area versus another. The last experiment that we did is we took water samples and we put them on slides and we looked at them under compound microscopes so we could see the microorganisms living. And there's, there are, there's a large uh, range of microorganisms that can live in the water and by, by tell, looking and identifying which organisms are which, you can tell how polluted the water is, such as uh, euglena in water, uh, euglena can, are very hardy and they eat just about anything so they live in very polluted water. So it's preferable not to have those in the water that you're drinking. <clears throat> so after I sat and I watched kids, uh, I, I decided to write a paper uh, and observe other people's research and how hands-on material was effective in the learning of science material. At Washington State University, uh, there was a fluid mechanics and thermodynamics lab. They, uh, they wanted to test how well students understood uh, the, the topic after, after they had two, they were exposed to two, two types of learning. They had a lecture, and then they had a, they had a digital learning module, which was their version of hands-on because it was an interactive, interactive method. Uh, observe, observing is a very good skill that we must all need and uh, they were attempting to see how well the students understood and when you understand you're able to observe and take in information. Um, so at the end of the experiment the students were asked how they felt after they were exposed to the lecture and then after how they, were how they felt after they were exposed to the digital learning module and for a high percentage of the students all felt quite confident in their abilities after 
they use the digital learning module versus the lecture. Now, obviously, there is no perfect way to go about this. Um, but it did seem that the students worked best with hands-on material. Mm. Hands-on learning is classified as active learning. Active learning, um, as said by Ken Petrus, is a process where the learner takes a dynamic and energetic role in one's own education. So hands-on work allows for students to actively participate uh, and engage what they're working with. Um, Ken, uh, Ken Petrus also said, active learners, for the most part, tend to be more creative and seem able to draw material and insights from previous learning. This is, this is very necessary when, uh, when we're going in a scientific process because it means you have taken what you've learned and you've been able to draw observations from what you've learned. And this is essential in working in any field because if you don't understand what you're working with, then it, what you'll try to do will be ineffective because you don't understand. Now, Ken Petrus also compared active learners to passive learners, whereas where you have, pa if you have active learners who are really engaged in the topic, passive learners are those who like to sit back and they just want to sit and have everything spoon-fed to them. They don't, they don't want to actively participate in their learning. So therefore, while they may be intelligent people, they don't learn as well because they don't actively participate in their own education. Now, after we observe a typical uh, process for a scientist is to hypothesize um, so that they can further explore the topic that they had, they had studied and observed. Ken Petrus, in his study, uh, stated that, well, he didn't state, I'm summarizing, he had believed that um, active learners ask questions that enhance their learning and can, and can be stimulating, ask questions that enhance their learning and can be stimulating for learning. Hypothesizing is where you take a question that you've thought about and you turn it into a testable, a testable statement. If they did not understand what they had, un had, they had worked with when, when they're hands-on, they would not be able to create a hypothesis that would, uh, would further allow them to test their, uh, their ideas. And in verses where you have the active learners who are really engaged and they can ask questions that are really good, passive learners are those who, when they ask questions, are like, um, what was that? Oh, I wasn't listening. So it's really not conducive to the learning environment. Therefore, we, we want to encourage active learning through hands-on material. From our hypotheses, we want to create experiments. Experimenting is an essential part of growing in a field, growing in knowledge, and therefore we, to further uh, increase our knowledge, we want to experiment. At Wageningen University in the Netherlands, uh, a researchers had, pr had provided a study with their students just to test how competent they were after they had an experiment or an experience with a certain topic. So they would go and they would, they would first give them the experiment and then they would watch them. Uh, they would watch them do it and from the after the experiment versus um, just those who had not, they saw that there was a higher competence level in those who had, had actively participated and had, who had worked in the experiment versus those who had just sat there and not done, un done anything. And this shows that if we actively participate and we experiment, we can increase our knowledge uh, through, through hands-on learning. In the book, Perspectives on Hands-on Learn Learning, written by Daniel Howery, uh, he states that practical experiences are incredibly necessary for one's development. By having practical experiences, you help encourage individuals to to uh, be able to work apart from authorities because in our lives we will move on to a point where we don't have 
we don't have an authority figure over us and we'll have to work through our issues on our own. And his study showed that being an active learner and hands-on material was very effective in producing individuals who could work on their own, who were very, who were very self-disciplined and able to work. From my experience and from what I researched, I saw that, that students were more capable after hand, after they, with hands-on learning. It, let me rephrase that. That was, that was pretty good, I'm sorry. Um, students were, are more capable after, hands, after undergoing hands-on learning in the areas of obs observing, hypothesizing, and experimenting. I saw this working with the kids, I saw it through research, and I hope that in the future we will be able to implement more hands-on curricula into science curriculum so that students will be more engaged and more understanding of the material. Thank you. So when they went off TV for a while, and um, they had found that they were more a more productive person when they were not uh, when they were not watching TV. TV had really just sucked them in, and for the most part, TV can be very uh, uneducational. At least the stuff that I watch, I like watching the Flash, so it's not not very <laughs> educational. Uh, but I do think that television, while it, it can be good for stimulating imagination, it most likely is a detriment to our society. Questions for JP. 